Peace, peace. Time to this one. Um, just want to just go over this website right here. You know, I knew about this website maybe about five or six years now. And, um, you know, I go here periodically when I want to look at certain things. But um, this brother has done some good work. He laid out, you know, a lot of this information um, clearly so you can just go to it and, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, if you want to, like, teach your children something, go to it. It's a good, it's definitely a good website. It's called realhistory.com. Um, and I'm going to be going to it showing you what this brother said about the miracles. So it's saying ancient man and his first civilization. Ancient black American. So it's saying prefer, preferring fantasy over science. It say something to ponder as you read these pages. We know of no source which insists Native Americans were exclusively the Mongoloid mulattoes we know so well. Like Geronimo and the likes except American I mean except American television and movies. They say all other sources like period artifacts and scientific studies clearly shows that blacks were the majority component of paleo America demographics. So I mean I know you guys gonna say that this website is not official and you're gonna go into oh well this you know this that and the third we came on a slave ship look man I'm constantly putting different images out there I'm a constantly and what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start putting these videos out there that I got that I seen that convinced me so you guys know you know I'm talking about scientific explanations because a lot of you people you put the science out there and you still like kind of want to debate and you still don't believe it if they telling you that it was already black people here I mean, well, the black people were the first ones here. What happened to them? See, that's the question that none of you people was thinking. What happened to these people who was here already? What happened to them? Why would they bring people over? I mean, uh, other people over here. And like I said, a lot of us don't even look like Africans, even if we is very dark. A lot of us do not look like Africans. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to look a couple of pages. I don't really feel like reading a lot, though, but I will stop and be reading some of um, some of the pictures and some of like the um, captions of the pictures. So here we go. Right. So it's uh, proof of the common blackness of all ancient um, hum humans. So these are just some photos of like some early figures of what they found. Found this in Romania. So this is they found this in Romania in 2002. You know, even though we talk about the American, I'm just gonna follow on. So it's saying this image right here is a reconstructed face of a teenage girl who lived in Mexico 12,000 years ago nicknamed Naya Naya Nick Naya whatever it's a first published in January um, January 2015 issue of the National Geographic magazine okay so this one right here is a reconstructed face of a young girl who lived more than 11,000 years ago in a rock shelter in southeastern Brazil. They say she was nicknamed Luzia. They say originally published by Brazilian magazine Vija August night August ninety nine. That's in South America, Central South America. So they say this is in North America. So it's saying a reconstructed face they say of a man who lived nine thousand ninety six hundred years ago in Columbia Valley, Washington State, you, you, I mean United States, America, nicknamed Kenneth Kenwith, Kenwith Man, originally published in Seattle Time, October 2012. All right. 
So it's saying North America. Let me see. It's saying nope. It said the skulls found in a warm mineral spring, Florida, circa 10,000 years ago, has not been reconstructed for obvious reasons. Race issues in southern USA. It said, however, scientific an analyst was done by a 2005 study published by the National Academy of Science Brazil, which found them consistent with other earlier earliest American settlers they say they described the remains thrust thrustly the earliest South Americans tend to be more similar to present Australia Melanesians and sub-Saharan African see except from I mean see accepts from the studies below as well as the links to the full studies all right, so this brother right here is giving you scientific um, explanations, even though that they're not going to tell us everything straightforward because they, they can't tell you everything straightforward because they don't know. But the way this thing is being is that these people who've been here in America, as we have always been here, and there's obvious reasons why they don't want us to know that because the people in these other countries, they know they've been there. They don't think they were slaves. They don't think they will say that they're not, they not told these ridiculous stories about they came over here on those stage. I've spoken to black people from Colombia and um, Mexico, Honduras and Belize. Some of them, some of them do believe it. But then then you have a lot of them say, nah, Ma, we was already here. So if you so they saying they was already there, then what's the likelihood of all the other black people that you see throughout this continent? OK, so brother giving you he giving you he giving you sources. So for those who like, you know, you want to clown me or whatever and say that, oh, oh, I talk like I've been, been to prison. Yeah, I do. I'm a product of my environment. You understand what I'm saying? I'm from the straight streets. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a product of my environment. But guess what? I got two and a half so-called European college degrees. Okay? I got associate. I got associates in science, a bachelor's in science, and I'm working on a master's in science. And the only reason I'm working on a master's in science so I can teach and I can expose this in these college universities. That's the only reason why I want to teach in one of these so-called universities. I'm not teaching for the money. I'm not teaching. I'm not trying to go there to teach for no um, none of these European um, awards or none of, none of their. I don't want none of their none of their um, so-called benefits. I'm only going there to expose this for what it should be exposed. That's it. So let's follow him. So it's saying these are the Getty Bird skulls, and just bear with me, all right? Because I'm gonna go to some pictures. I'm just just breaking down some of this early stuff right here. I ain't even read a lot of this stuff. I'm just free, kind of freestyling through it. So just bear with me until we get to the pictures, all right? So it says these are the Getty Bird skulls. It said originally found while trailing the garden on a, histor a historic burner farm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, 1949. It was thought to be a Civil War soldier. However, analysts determined that the skulls were of Native American man. They say black by nose bridge type, age 22 to 25, who lived around 12,069 through 1299 saying America's Southwest what a, a young man from the, the Southwest was doing on the East Coast in Pennsylvania was not disclosed and was not the was not the evidence for the determination see they don't read they don't read duty scores right here for a reason and that's another thing like a lot of you guys who do research if you really do research, you should listen to the God David Children's. You know what I'm saying? And I posted the last video I posted because you know what? He goes over a lot of this stuff, but he won't admit a lot of the people that they found in North America are Negroes. That's the only thing I don't like. He would describe them to the he would describe their like their like what they had on and you know certain characteristics of these people is the stuff that we do. You don't see no other people in the planet doing what we do now you see people throughout south america with gold teeth and stuff like that you do see that 
And you see mostly Negroes. Like, you see a lot of these Caribbean people with gold teeth in their mouth or whatever. And we wear gold teeth in our mouth, too. Negroes in the South wear gold teeth in their mouth or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And in Florida, they wear gold teeth. And in California, people been wearing gold teeth in their mouth in America. That ain't no European thing. That ain't no Chinese thing. That's only a thing that you see Negroes doing. Or people who've been living around Negroes do that. All right? So let's go on. So this is, y'all can check this out, man. Like I said, I'm not going to read through everything, but this is some more um, interesting information. And this is from, I guess this this is like a, um, a scholarly website, but it says cranial morphological of earliest, of, of earliest Americans from, from La, Laga, Laga Santa, um, Brazil. It say implications for the settlement of the new world. So, you know, here go to Arthur, Mark, Herbie, or whatever, you know, some of the stuff is in um, Latin or Spanish, if you will. You say the abstract, it goes on, and it say, right, I'm gonna read a little bit of this. It say comparative morphology, morph morph morphological studies of the earliest human skeletons of the new world have shown that whereas late prehistoric re recent of recent and present native americans tend to exhibit a cranial morphology mo mo morphology similar to late and modern northern e asians it's a short and wide neural cranial high orthogenetic eh, if i said it right they say and broad faces and relatively high and narrow orbit noses. They say the earliest South Americans tend to be more similar to present Australian, Melanesian, and Sub Saharan Africa. They say narrow and long neurocranian. Alright? I'm gonna stop it there, man. I gonna get my glasses. But I'm gonna stop it there. But look, listen, this is a. I'm not gonna stop the video. I'm just gonna stop like reading. I'm just gonna breeze through a lot of this stuff. You know, you got some pictures here. And I guess this this is like, this is in Africa right here. This is in Southern Africa. They're showing you the different people or whatever. But it's all gonna come back. And it's saying that. I right, hold up. All right, this weapon right here, this weapon right here is called the Atlatic, the Atlatic, whatever, if I'm pronouncing it right. They say is the ancient African, ancient Europe, the ancient Pacific. They say, but not is, but, but, but not in ancient China. That is at least circumstantial evidence that not everybody came across the Barren Strait. All right, so this is the Atlatic. Latin, whatever, how do you pronounce it? They say is an arrow or spear throwing tool that uses leverage to achieve greater velocity in dart throwing. They say, and including a bearing sur surface which allows the, the user to temporarily store energy during the throw. So, I guess this is something similar to a bow and arrow before the bow and arrow was created. Because, as you see. You see, most people in America had the bow and arrow. You see them with the bow and arrow. You know what I'm saying? They saying that the people in ancient China did not have a bow and arrow, and that's some that's some good stuff to really look at too. That's a good clue to really look at. When we see a lot of these, when you see a lot of these pictures of people with bow and arrows, they don't look like these mongoloids. All right, and they say here is another study regarding. I mean. Another study in which says much the same thing regarding blacks as um, uh, um, original Americans. Now this is from the Nature. This is the International Weekly Journey Journal of Science. So it's a genetic evidence for two founding populations of the Americans. Okay. So it's a genetic genetics. Some studies have consistently indicated a single common 
original origin no it's the origins of Native American groups. They say from Central to South America. However, morphological studies have suggested a more complex picture whereby the Northeast Asians of affinities of present day Native Americans can contrast which a distinctive morphologic morphological morph, 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 I can't see the word seen in in some of the earliest American um, skeletons which shares traits with present day Australians or Australians whatever it's a indigenous group in Australia Melanesia and um, islands of south of southeast Asia so you know all right so when I show that picture when it shows the Americans that's the reason why it says Australian noise I guess they don't consider the Australian or people like that to be Negroes but the from the picture they look just like a Negro so I mean I don't know how that that you know it I'm still trying to find some research on that I haven't been able to, to find that picture or have someone really explain to me the picture or whatever but like I said from the looks of it and from what I see that's a nigga so let's go on all right and this is this is from the studies man you know what I'm saying like these are I guess you want to say people who did a um methodology or whatever let me go back up So hey, if y'all want to check it out, that's the um, article. It's Nature International Weekly Journey of, Journal of Science. It's an article preview. I mean preview. Um, this is it. Let me see. Let me find the author. These are the people involved. The people put it together. I guess it's a, a combination of um, these people work right here. Check it out though. Check and check out this site too. Definitely, he got a lot of stuff on. He just got things about the America, um, but he has a lot of things about China, Russia, like how he found black people all around the world. So it ain't just the Americans. But this is my. This is where I try to study. I try to do my studies on this. So I'm gonna go down and look at some of these pictures. It's a California mission. So these are some of the California Indians right here. According to the picture. They go some more of the Indians right here with that bow and arrow. Look at the brother lips and nose. Negro, of course. It's an Indian hunting in the Bay of San, San Francisco, California. Yeah. See, 1789, 1839. They got that picture right here that I put up. That a lot of people said that these wasn't Negroes. That they looked at their hair because the hair was straight. Don't forget, Negroes' hair could be, I mean, not straight, but if they if they take care of their hair, put the right oils in their hair, their hair, their hair be just like that. If your hair long. They say Indians of the Bay Area of San Francisco, California. Ah, they got the other picture right here. June 26th. 1579 ceremony of of sir francis drake being crowned with the headdress of the california indians these is negroes man i mean you can go ahead and play your games if you want and sit here and say that these ain't negroes but look man i ain't got time for it no more there go some more negroes look look it said the portion the 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 portion the, the portion of Indians from the Mississippi Mississippi tribes of the governor general general of British North America Sir George Prevost Bar Bar Annette, general in eighteen fourteen. Alright, so it's saying the scene depicts an official Indian Delegation at the end of the war, 1812, Missouri History Museum. Now, this brother could be a Negro. This brother got this brother, Negro. This brother's a Negro. This brother obviously got a Negro. Look at his hands. 
or whatever. And these sisters right here is Negroes. So, I mean, you know, look, man. You can say what you want. Aha. They got, a, they got my picture right there. We know this is a Negro. You guys can say, oh, oh, oh that's an Indian. That's an Indian. Well, let's look at what the Indians look like now. If you see people in these tribes, a lot of these tribes do not. I have never seen a uh, Indian other than a, a, a so-called black Indian or a black Aborigine who's claiming now that he is the original uh, person of America that looked like this. But prior to this, none of the Indians look like this. None of this. Now I'm starting to see when I look in the Lenape tribe, I look in the Wapanaki tribe, the Pinkwa some Cherokee tribes, um, some of the Chick Tall, um, you know what I'm saying? You start seeing now you're starting to see, you know what I'm saying, the black existence of some of these of some of these Indian tribes. But prior to that, the Indians look like freaking Mexicans, alright? So this a Negro, this a Negro. This is a Negro. And this is a Negro. And these are all Negroes behind them. Okay? So, you know, I mean let's we notice our our know this Martinez. It says, ah, it says 1671, say a book of Dutch explorer mission, missionary on uh, uh, Nolis Martinez, 1625 through 1683. So, there we have it right there. I mean, that's that's the explanation of that picture. The ones every everybody always sit up there and try to criticize or whatever. And some more stuff. Hey, go, some stuff. This is... The Dutch painter Peter, Peter whatever painting of the Yamasee War. They say the full title translated from the Dutch reads: "The gruesome attack of the Indians on the English in Carol in the Carolina West Indies, 19 no, let's say 19 April 1715." Look at these. These look like Indians to you. I mean, I I don't know. You tell me, do these people look like Indians? Yes or no? They don't look like Indians to me. They say in the Carolina. In the Carolina. Carolina is freaking South Carolina and North Carolina. As well, it says the West Indians too. Some more people right here. It say New Netherland Apparel, Modern New England, Delmarva Peninsula, Cap, Cap, Cap Cod, New York. New Jersey, Delaware, and Connecticut, and say with small outposts in Pennsylvania and Rhode Island, and say from the book by John Aglaby, Aglaby, John Aglaby, that's the author of this book, 1600s, 16, I mean 1600 through 1676. Now you see him with that same bow and arrow. Anytime you see the people with this bow and arrow right here, you know they was free. They go your nappy curly hair right there. Look at this sister right here. These are African American. These are people right here, Aborigines that have been classified as African American. And they saying that these are indigenous people. I've yet to see any Indians yet. I've yet to see any Indians yet. And the pictures is telling the the pictures is telling us what's going on. Now as I go down, you're gonna start seeing some different um pictures or whatever though but i'm gonna keep it mainly on the aborigines the copper color races all right so i mean y'all more than y'all can read all this stuff man i'm just like i said i'm just trying to point out the um pictures man and just keep it moving let me see this it said originally bosca when new hampshire statue of heroin Hannah Dustin, they say with the tomahawk, they say with the tomahawk in her right hand and the scalp of a dozen Indian women and children meant to collect in bounty in her left hand. Wow. <laughs> see, the savage European. See, you see how they, and they decapitated. They say, so where does the term red man or red skin come from? So say historic pro prof um, professor Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz, Ortiz states that the American settlers were paid bounties for killing Indians. It say, and they gave a name to the 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 mutated and bloody corpses they left in the wake of their scout hunt. Redskins. Okay, so the Redskins came from them killing people in blood. Okay, so they wasn't originally red. All right, so let me see what this says. It's Frederick von Rock, von Rock. 
It's saying 1736, Philip George Frederick von Rapp, then all, uh, only 25, no, it's a then only 25 years old, sell with other colonists from from Germany to Georgia. They say one of his intentions impressed impressed in later before he left Europe was to bring back from America and say a little proof of what he called the strange new world. So basically he wanted to come here and bring back some proof that he reached there. Something that no one I guess they didn't have in the, in um in Europe. They say I I I deal idyllic and enthusiastic, well educated and blessed with amazing artistic gifts. Von Reck kept a travel diary. It said wrote separate descriptions of plants, animals, and Indians he discovered in Georgia and drew some fifty watercolor and pencil sketches of what he saw. Note these drawings are reput are, are reproductions races may not or no it's a racism may or may not affect it, their modern appearance so let's say this is so you got the brown skin right here so let's say supreme commander supreme commander and they was using names like that mm. supreme commander of the yachty indian nation damn 1730 the Yachi. Uh, you know what? I ain't going to go because it's a couple of pictures I really want to point out. But like I said, look, y'all more than welcome to check this out. Keep this for a source. Let your children look over this. When they ain't got nothing better to do, let them look through this. Teach them a little stuff. You can put it put it on your um, TV. You know what I'm saying? Let the family check it out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a lot of interesting stuff you could do with this. So I'm saying these are the Yachi War Dance. It's uh, illustrated by Philip von ron rich georgia state 1739 36. now look look at these people look and that's what what's the name said varizano said varizano said that they tied their hair behind their head in a small tail well this is in georgia but south carolina and georgia is right there Georgia, i mean the carolina and georgia varizano came to the um carolinas but he said that the people he encountered had had um like they kept a tail like a small little ponytail now if your hair was long like these indians that they show you know what i'm saying most of us if you got a small afro you tie your hair you braid your hair behind your head and that's how most of us wear our hair like old old school old school negroes you see with long hair you see always see them with keeping it nice and wavy and they tie and they got their hair braided in the back and they ain't a real long tail but it's small, something like Phil Valentine, how he keep his hair. I know, I know hundreds of niggas. I've seen hundreds of niggas in the South who wear their hair like that. So, we're going to move on, man. It's a lot. So, these are some of his drawings. It's obvious, could be a Negro. And you're going to picture that little boy. The one they always showed, the one that was sent in London, it say from the painting of James Agelthorpe, presenting the Yamacro Yamacro Indian to Georgia treaties. It say in London, it say James Agelthorpe is holding the hand of the young black boy. It say of the young of the young black boy. Who is this boy? <laughs> Aha, more Negroes. It's saying James Agla thought paintings of the Tamachi, the Tamachi, the Tamachi, the Tamachi, the Tamachi, the Tamachi, the All right, the Tamachi. See how that came smooth as hell. And, and that actually came smoother than reading some of this European shit. The Tamachi, the Tamachi, the and the Yamacro, the Yamacro Indians. They say the Georgia Treaties, July July third, seventeen thirty four. These are Negroes. You can say what the fuck y'all want. I don't care. These are Negroes right here. These are Negroes. This little boy is a Negro. This little boy don't look like no Indian I ever seen before. So stop playing, y'all. Aha! More Negroes. Look, like I told you, the Phil Valentine braid, or like the one the the one braid to the back, or whatever. It's a Negro. 
It's a Negro right here, okay? It's another Negro. It's a man and woman of the At the Atagamese. The Atagamese. The At the At the Atagagamese. It's a Fox Indian, Wisconsin. These are how these people is getting down in Wisconsin. See a little boy got an afro? Look. And this is these are actual paintings, man. So y'all can go ahead and say what the hell y'all want to say, man. You know what I'm saying? These is black people. You can say what y'all want to say. Oh, they got my favorite picture. They got another one of my favorite pictures right here. They got another one. Look. Got the tall European, which we know they ain't really that fucking tall. They got the phoenix bird on it. Look, that's a phoenix bird. That ain't even an um, eagle. That's the phoenix. But nonetheless, let's look at the Indians, okay? Now, some of you guys will say these are slaves. But I beg a different. I beg a different. These people are not slaves. Look, slaves don't have feathers and, and the so called native and with, with the bow and arrow and with the with the um makeshift axe, okay? It's my picture by John Fur Fur Furburn. Okay, the emblem of America. Okay, let's let's look at the emblem of America. Okay, you don't see no other race of the people with them. You see the European and you see the real true Aborigines of North America. You don't see no other people behind them helping them, just like we don't have now. <coughs> Excuse me, but you do see the two Negroes. Okay, the emblem of America. And this is the emblem of America, 1798. It's a, a mezzotop. It's a by by British in, in, engraver John Ferber. Okay. Ah, there we go again. Look at my other favorite picture. She's beautiful too, man. She's beautiful, and she got the turban with the feathers on. Beautiful picture. I love this picture right here. She got the turban with the feathers on. She got the bow and arrow. She got the, they said that this cat is supposed to be a leopard. I beg a differ. I don't believe so. She got her sandals on, okay? They say the emblem of America, London um, published first, February 1801. They say by Hines and Son, British Museum, text with an action quote. Allegorical, an allegorical figure shows full length standing to the left. It's a head tilted to the right, wearing a a wearing a leopard skin, wearing a leopard skin. It's a museum, of course. The main su the main supports for Albion's false history. It's saying case the animal skin is called the leopard the leopard skin to imply that the figure is African. They say or somehow associated with African. They say actually the headdress suggests of. I mean, one of the black California tribes and the spotted animal could be a ocalot. That's a type of um, cat. They say a California bobcat. They say or Canadian lynx. See how they try to fucking throw shit in the game? Excuse my language. See how they try to throw stuff in the game right there by trying to throw you off? This clearly says the emblem of America or whatever. And you see the system. Then they got an emblem of Africa. And you see the emblem of Africa. And the lady is much. I mean, well, she's not much darker. But she got a different tone like you see now. You see the Africans got a different tone. We got more of this copper color, dark chestnut tone to blend in with the canopy of the Americans. All right? And that's how pretty much how it works. Okay? I got some more pictures. All right, I'm right back. So, Virginia. All look, right. So you got that same look. You got the right same here. thing on. And you know what? Just hold on for a second. I gotta pause this real quick. This picture right here is the Virgin, the Virginia Partis Australis. It's say at Florida Partis Orientalis. Whatever. I can't pronounce this. Whatever the fucking Latin. Excuse my language. Latin is. But it's the op. It's the Ag Agelbi. The Agelbi map. Of southeast, extending the York River in Virginia to North Florida, the map shows the area from the Lower Chesapeake Bay to Northern Florida, and is a faithful reduction of William Blee Blues Blee's um important phototype phototype map of 1638, which Cunning considered to 
be the most correct map of this area yet to appear the reduced explanation is more de 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 decorative than the blues in that it bears two large decoratives card torches depicting native scenes birding the map was first produced in Montanez landmark perhaps the greatest illustration of of the the greatest illustration book on the new world produced in the 17th century Montanez work con contained over 100 beautiful engraved plates views and maps of the North and South America beginning in 1671 the maps also appeared in near in early in issues of the of the edition I mean the English edition of Martinez issues by John Alby but was replaced let's say in six, 1673 by the famous first Lord per Petrator's map, which gave a more a more up to date picture of the English pre present in Carolina. All right, so this is ex. I'm sorry, damn, I'm bugging. This is the map right here. This is the picture in large right here. So, as you see, these people right here, these people are not what we call Indians. They don't have long hair. You see they got little afros like we wear you see what the people look like and then when you go down here and look at the other picture you see some interesting stuff look this could be an african-american got the bone arrow i already explained to you that the bone arrow was not nothing that the original that the natives that they show you normally wore or normally carry that's not a weapon that they normally even you know what i'm saying had so you see the brother too the brother got a uh, uh, fed, I mean, not a fez on, but uh, obvious a turban with them same, like this, this with the same feathers. Now, you see the same image of people like this who was took back from the Americas in London. You see statues of people with this same, with this same headdress on in London with the turban on. They got the turban on and they got the same feathers right here. And I, I, I got the pictures, I can show y'all another, um. <clears throat> I definitely got the pictures now you see right here in this picture right here let me see let me read this one it said a recent addition I'm sorry for pronouncing this stuff wrong man I can't pronounce some of this stuff some of this stuff is just crazy All right, I'm gonna start from right here 1735 they say the map is based upon the John the Johnson map of fit of 1651 it's a set to set suitors replaces the whatever New York City with a new view of New York entitled New York New York Civ New New Amsterdam they say with a key to a view in Latin above the view is a ele elaborate elaborate scene depicting natives and gods presenting tribute to the English monarchy George II now look when you see this picture right here, you still see the brother with the turban on. And like I said, look, these people got afros, but they will make you think that these people were slaves. This is the this is the story that they tell you that these people right here were slaves. These people was not no slaves. They are the indigenous people giving giving gifts to the people or what we call, I guess, the royalty from so-called Europe or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But you see, the brother right here got that same turban. When you see this right here, you know that this is a, a, a Aboriginal headwear. Because you, like I said, when you look and you see the images of some of the statues that they got in London and Europe, they got this right here. So they might have took some of these people back because you see the same image of this of the um of the turban with the with the three. I guess I don't know. I, I um I guess I see it say that's um. That resemble that's where they got the Turk from, like they would. That's the reason why they started calling people Turkey or calling Turk because they had the turbans on with the thing that come out like a turkey. But that's another story, though. I'm gonna go on. So here's the picture. 
they go to the picture right here. You know what I'm saying? Right here. It's close, little close up image of it or whatever. And like I said, and maybe this, like maybe some of you aborigines that know what I'm talking about. You know, when you see the image of the black, of the black man or what we call him or more or whatever. But in Europe, you see him, he got the, he got the, um, the grass, what well, he got the dress around to him when he got something also around like his chest area that might have been like a bone arrow well, you see he got arrows and you also see him with this headdress right here you they got they got statues of this stuff in europe all right so i'm gonna go down i'm gonna do a couple more and i'm gonna cut it short because this has been a long video already so it's saying constitution of the florida indians the florida indians or whatever this is a picture from martinez and this basically show some of the people in the Floridas now remember when you see this headdress too because this headdress right here is telling the th telling the story too this headdress also is the images of the people of the Americas you see these same images of these of these the headdresses in Europe you see the same images of the headdresses in Europe as well as the one I just showed you as well as this one right here when you see the brother it's a statue of a moor what we well what we've been told was a moor or whatever standing he's standing up and like he got his weight up or whatever he got like a bow and arrow he got like a white something white covering his private area and he got like a white he got like a white turban on with the feathers with the feathers coming up out of it so I mean, like I said, man, a lot of stuff is starting to make a lot of sense now. At first it didn't, but it's starting to make a lot of sense. This is the book right here. I know, I know this Martinez, America being the latest accurate description. Got a real long title to it, but that's what I normally tell people is America being the latest accurate description. Just some more images. The Lenape tribe. Like I said, you got a lot of interesting stuff on him, man. I, I'm only halfway through the page, and I'm on, I'm almost at an hour already. So, see these brothers right here? These brothers is Negroes right here. These brothers is classified as they see they they did their own status correction because they was able to track themselves back. But these brothers right here will be considered Negroes. You understand? And that's the Lenape chief. Look at these. So these people right here, you see the Lenape lady dancing, performing the, during the, the heritage celebration in Dover. Now look, what what is these sisters right here would be classified? If you was to bump into one of these sisters on the street, what would you call them? They're not saying that they're from Africa. So where these sisters right here come from? Now as I go down, you're going to see white people in the tribe. Like I told you, there was white runaway um, slaves that a lot of these tribes let come into them so that's the reason why you see a lot of the mixing a lot of the mixing wasn't from white people raping um, black people it was from a lot of the white people who was in these who was who were slaves a lot of these white people were slaves and they used to run away from they used to run away from the fucking plantation and then run right into the tribes and the tribes used to let them stay there because a lot of these tribes was nobles but you had a lot of these tribes too that would kill them so you know we're going see look you see see what i told you it's a four-year-old <laughs> lenape tribe member alden little fire now how did he get it how did he get into the tribe we already know they go some more people in the tribe look at the sister right here look at the little sister right here look just like my daughter right there look it's a annual not not to cope not to cop Len, lenny lenape power See, I could pronounce this stuff real good. I don't know why. I could pronounce this these native these native words very good. I ain't even got my glasses on. And I could pronounce them better than English words for some reason. I don't know. Now here we go with the Seminoles. This I'm gonna stop it after this one right here. But we already know some people say Seminole mean runaway slave. I don't believe that. Now here goes some images of some of the Seminoles. This picture right here, we know that they colored it and they lightened the picture up or whatever. You see that some of these people look Asian. But when we go down, we're gonna see some different images, alright? This that this is 
the Negro Abraham. Say Abraham, a black seminal leader, say from N.R. Engraving, published 1848, say in the books of the original prog I mean, pro progress and conclusions of the Florida War by John T. Siraj, Siraj, whatever. And right here. Man, it's a black seminal scout branded Sirker. It say eighteen seventy. It say about fifty. It say about fifty in number. Served as skilled trappers, distinguished themselves in numerous military and great en engagement. It say four black uh, Seminole Indian scouts receive a Congressional Medal of Honor. Now fuck them. I mean, excuse me. Forget the fact that they joined the army. I ain't even big enough that. But look, these are these are Seminole. It's not saying that these people are no Africans or no slaves. But these are Seminoles. Look at these. Look at these brothers. These are Negroes. So in 1878, in 1870, who are the descendants of these brothers right here? And what are they classified now as? That's the question. More Negroes. See? See? Look. More. More. Look. John Horse. It say as he appeared around 1840. It's a source of the original sketch unknown they say the engraving entitled golf golfer it's a john john um wait john seminal inter interpreter first appeared in Sarat siraj 1848 history of war Sem it's a seminal indian scouts they say william shell late 1890s they say that the two served as scouts for the army for more than 20 years so he's saying that these brothers are Seminoles. What would these brothers be classified as now? Please tell me. Please tell me what these brothers would be classified as, and please tell me what would their family, where, what would their family members be classified as right now? Are they still calling them Seminoles, or are they calling them African Americans? So look, man, I'm gonna stop. This has been a long one, man, and I'm gonna stop this video right here, man. But I will, you know, I'm gonna make more. Like I said, America was a Negro continent, part two. Um, definitely, I, I, I see a lot of people enjoyed the video, but I'm going to stop it right here, man. And with that being said, I'm going to talk to this one. Peace.